Hello, everyone. Today is Friday, April 28th, 2023. My name is Evan. Welcome back to another edition of Stock Market Weekly. This is episode 681, where we break down the most important trends, price action, and noteworthy moves this past week in financial markets. And as a reminder, we're going to be taking a rare two-week hiatus. So there will be no show next Friday and the following week. We will be back on schedule on, I don't have the date in front of me, May 20th, thereabouts, whatever that next Friday is, we'll be back in action, but we should only miss two weeks and um, we'll be back at it. So let's jump into the headlines and some of the takeaways, talking points for this week's show. Big story, of course, we had a very busy week of earnings. We had a lot of those NASDAQ mega cap companies reporting and stocks resolved their consolidation higher. They took those earnings in stride. Not everything was uh, a beat and easy road to the upside. We had uh, some bumps in between, but generally speaking, stocks resolved higher. We're going to look at the price action in part two of the show because it was pretty spectacular the way the the week sort of uh, developed now f you know along with that we did have interest rates finally cooling off arguably a more important story is just finally getting a little bit of a reprieve there we had interest rates ratcheting up over the past couple of weeks putting some pressure and uncertainty on markets and we finally got a little bit of that relief sort of uh, given given back we do have the FR frc so First Republic government sort of rescue in progress as, uh, you know, government and FDIC kind of figures out how they're going to sort of take over and, and backstop and and uh, save another bank uh, going on in progress now and this weekend. VIX, all the meanwhile, is back to multi-year lows. I think we actually got a 15 on the VIX. That is insane to think about. And uh, it just feels like it's been so, so long since we've seen a number that low for the VIX. And we do still see that market cap weighted dominance continuing, which we're going to look at some charts as well uh, shortly. So let's get into the numbers here. One week change on the right hand side here. You can see mostly green across the board. NASDAQ was the big winner. Russell 2000, not so much. So some of that bank uh, bank uh, panic, let's call it, or at least the uncertainty is maybe a better way to describe it. Still kind of creeping into the Russell 2000, which ho is home to a lot of those uh, smaller cap financials and energy. But, um, you know, seeing seeing um, KRE and some others just continue to see some weakness there uh, as as speculation is, is really kind of uh, leaving the smaller companies there and that banking index and moving more into these mega cap uh, companies. Now, if we look at trends, just generally speaking here, you can see mostly positive picture we have here. Again, this is something we track every week. And, you know, a few weeks ago, we finally started to see the 200 SMA begin to rise. This was, you know, again, something that um, is a bit of a regime shift. And, you know, who knows if we're out of the woods uh, longer term in this in this big cycle here in this inflationary sort of cycle. Um, but regardless, I think, you know, taking note of the 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 stability and now the the slow rise here in some of these longer term moving averages uh, is a bit encouraging there on the long side, at least 50 SMA mostly rising across the board, short term moving averages, a pretty mixed race here, S&P NASDAQ bullish, uh, Russell 2000, again, still showing that underperformance as of recently. Now, volatility environment, this is what's really impressive here, 15 spot 98 on the VIX, while that is uh, Again, the lowest number we've seen going back, well, we'll look in part two of, of just exactly when we saw a 15 handle on the VIX, but it's been over a year and um, continues to just march lower. NASDAQ fall is 20, spot 37. So again, NASDAQ volatility really unwinding there. This has been sitting in the mid 20s, upper 20s for most of this year, and um, certainly now coming back to low levels as well. Russell 2000, even despite you know the underperformance there and a lot of the uncertainty under the hood, uh, we still are at uh, low levels as well, 21, spot 09, all of those declining on the week. Now, this is where things, again, are still just a tougher uh, tougher bullish case to make and that is market breath when you look at something like the number of stocks hitting 52 week highs and lows uh, in the NYSE you're still seeing more stocks outpace on the downside new stocks hitting lows rather than stocks hitting highs despite market weighted indices pushing to new highs so this is this uh, kind of uh, divergence or kind of um, 
you know, sluggish behavior you're seeing out there in terms of liquidity or just in terms of the smaller cap stocks. And uh, it hasn't changed. It's trying to change, especially with Friday's turnaround numbers. But um, we'll have to see more kind of uh, upswing here in the stocks hitting 52 week highs to really kind of turn this ratio around. Now, this chart here is going to save to part two, but kind of threw it in now because it speaks to it is is really market breadth. And, and we talked about this in the past couple of videos. But if you look in the top left here, this is again, the the equal weighted S&P 500 index. And we're looking back over approximately three months on the right top top right, we have just the S&P 500, uh, as you all uh, know and love, the SPY. And if you just look at where we are relative to three months ago, we are kind of banging our head back to three-month highs, whereas on the equal weighted index here, we are well be below the peak here going back three months. So you can see, again, just the underperformance out of the equal weighted index. If we go to the bottom left and bottom right charts, you've got the same thing here, equal weighted NASDAQ 100 on the left bottom left and then the nasdaq 100 cap weighted on the bottom right and again you can see we're hitting new highs in the ndx we are nowhere near the highs in the equal weighted index so this just again speaks to liquidity breadth and just general uh market cap dominance now ibd sponsor of the show shout out to ibd thanks for making this content possible check out this link here to jump on a digital subscription and in their digital subscription i'm looking at the put call ratio that they update it's going out at a 0.84 which i don't know that means a whole lot in terms of um, actionable signal it's kind of the lower end of the range where we, we we do get a little bit of a bounce from but i actually thought the the, the session before look at this spike up uh to about 1.1 i think it was uh just a couple of days ago when the market was kind of freaking out a little bit as as you know midweek let's call it as um fr frc started to uh first republic started to you know, uh, essentially cascade lower and, and, and go into uh, bankruptcy, let's call it, or take over, take over land. And you can see that just how quick the protection is is rushed out to be purchased and how quickly and easily it is to spike uh, this put call ratio. And here we are back down to kind of uh, complacency or just normal trading level. So I thought that was interesting, uh, 0.84 going into the weekend. Now, if we do look at uh, sector performance, you can see despite mostly positive week, uh, it was a split race here in terms of sectors. We had communication services, technology, and real estate at the top of the list here, almost 4%, 2%, and 1% respectively. On the downside, we had utilities, industrials, and healthcare all down about half a percent to 1% on the week. If you look at the one month returns though, so every single sector here is in the green over the past one month, dominated mostly by, uh, you know, uh, communication services now um, and uh, consumer staples were the top two performers on the past month. Now, Treasury yields, like we talked about top of the show, this was nice to see finally cooling off a little bit here. Ten year yield back below three point five percent. That's good. Um, I think equity markets, generally speaking, probably like that. And um Certainly tech does uh, in terms of those uh, growth stocks um, that are potentially not making profits yet. So nice to see a little bit of uh, a, a discount there in terms of yields. And if we go to our commodity slide, you got Bitcoin at the top of the list up six and a half percent. Nice uh, rally for that. Gold as well, starting to inch back higher. Ag, natural gas, silver, all eking out. Nothing spectacular, basically flat on the week, as was the dollar index, basically flat this week. Crude oil was down slightly and copper was down about 3%. So that is it for part one. We'll be back here in just a second with some charts. All right, we are back. We've got TC2000 open and we're looking at the NASDAQ 100. This is where we're going to begin our journey today because this is where we we sort of left off. This was the the, the, the takeaway uh, thoughts from last week's video. The title of the video, in fact, was all eyes on the NASDAQ 100 consolidation into a busy earnings week. And so we had, of course, you know, the, the heavyweights reported this this week. Uh, we didn't have Apple report yet. They do report next week. So Apple is still one that is coming and it is obviously uh, the lar largest, second largest. I don't know. Did Microsoft pass it yet? I'm not, I don't think so. Uh, Apple is regardless a extremely big waiting here in the queues and, and that'll be next week. But we did get the others out and the market did a masterful job at sort of 
um, whip sawing, I would say the majority or catching folks off guard here. And it was a tricky week. Let's recap sort of where we were and where we've kind of come from. This is our old roadmap here on the queues. And, and basically we talked about being sandwiched between call it 310 and, and 320, this very, very tight range. You don't often see a range this darn tight here in the queues, just tons of overlapping bars. This is traders going back and forth, essentially, you know, lots of chop, lots of uncertainty, everybody's placing their bet and you're getting lots of shares taking, changing hands and, and, and positions being established in this range, bullish and bearish. And the, this is energy, right? This is energy that ultimately gets released in the form of a trend. It leads to volatility expansion. And the first move was down. And the first move, this was a breakdown bar, a very masterful sort of breakdown bar. It came on slightly higher volume. You clearly closed at new kind of lows here. It looked like we were just about to come down and fill this gap. This was after a couple of, I, I can't remember the companies that reported earnings. I feel like this week um, went by so quick, but you know, we, we were in the midst of, of digesting earnings. We, we broke down, we closed at the lows, and then we followed it up with a, a fairly, you know, uh, bearish inside close at the lows bar again. I mean, we did gap up on the day, but look at the wicks up here. We failed at the prior day's highs. We failed to come back into this range, and then we closed towards the lows here. And this really kind of set us up for a fairly, you know, pessimistic look. And the market did the exact opposite on Thursday. The the, the market psychology here and and the the just essentially the dynamics of, of, of traders being trapped here, either getting stopped out and pushed into the short side of things. Uh, and, and, and it led into this gap up, which gave no chance to really get out. You had to essentially cover or buy back shares or get back in this long trade immediately on the open. And it just kind of launched higher here and went right back to the top of the range. And then we got a follow through day on Friday to, to, to new highs. So this range here essentially had a false breakdown and then we pushed right through it. And now we're closing uh, at new highs on the year and above this range. So said another way or looked another way here, we really did come down and, and kind of test beautifully this 310 area, which again is, is a level we've looked and had on our charts for, for a significant amount of time. And it tested there, It you know, no, no sellers could penetrate below here and off we go to the races. So when I look at this chart, again, weekly chart here, I think sh shows the picture nicely again, four weeks going sideways, digesting, going through earnings. And now the market is, is looking like it picked its direction higher after a little bit of a false breakdown. This looks good for higher prices. In fact, it looks like it's gonna be back up to test these August highs in pretty short order. Unless, you know, of course, uh, you know, Apple spoils the party or we get some extremely, you know, hawkish, more new rhetoric from the Fed or, you know, bank failure, whatever else that can still derail this party. But I would say, you know, in the face of all of that and all of those unknowns and bearish catalysts that we can point to about, you know, the income, the, you know, the looming recession and the Fed staying tight and a banking crisis and all these things that just make us want to sell everything, the market continues to march higher here. And technically it's holding up extremely well. So the Q's new highs here, I would not want to be fading it if we start losing, right? If we start losing, I guess if you're very active, I mean, if we fall back into this range below 319 or so, that's a, a small kind of short-term micro level where you could, you know, uh, take your pedal take the take the pedal off the gas so to speak on the bull side but really it's this 310 i mean this is just the bigger more intermediate position trader longer term swing trader area that i'd be paying attention to in the queues if we start breaking below 310 then certainly all bets are off but i think in either scenario i mean you can have some pretty calculated uh stop losses and uh risk management you know, kind of um, levels in place here to participate in this market. Breath is still terrible, like we talked about at the beginning of the show. So that is certainly something in, in the bear camp here. And maybe we are getting a bit complacent, but um, I would say if you're looking at this 
price action in a vacuum here this false breakdown signal trapping you know and and trapping some shorts and you know uh shaking out some of the weak longs and springboarding higher is pretty powerful uh after such a long consolidation so that's the read on the cues and it really kind of spills over to the s p as well so i mean the s p 500 where you know now uh, again closing at new highs here we're back towards this 4200 level or getting close to it we're not quite there yet uh but clearly you can see that it looks like we've got some powerful you know kind of uh again just very large range bars over the past three days the realized fall here for for a 16 vol market i mean we had a 1.6 percent down day um you know we had another down session here only a half a percent but still on wednesday and then you just turned it around with two percent up and then uh, almost one percent up that doesn't feel like a, a 16 vix market um it, it's certainly trading a lot more high octane than a than a 15 spot nine six market but here we are and again kind of coming back up towards some resistance so it'll be interesting to see how this this handles 4200 4180 the old february highs uh but so far both these markets certainly have some pep in their step uh to the upside russell 2000 definitely you know doesn't have that same uh excitement this is uh de negative on the week here it's still in a range it is rebounding thursday friday but still just well off of uh the 180 so this has some more work to do as we mentioned earlier you know the kre regional banking um this briefly made a new low on tuesday and then it started to recover a bit here later in the week but uh clearly you know there's there's still some small cap weakness and again the breath like we looked at at the top of the video uh really is just not um not as strong as uh the cues and the big heavyweights that are that are really just moving this market right now so as and as a reminder as, as we sort of talked about apple this does report earnings on the fourth so that is uh in next week uh thursday i think so uh keep an eye on this apple though broadly speaking speaking is, is very much in this this nice uptrend here and uh, doesn't seem to have too much concern uh, going into its earnings. We'll see how that shakes out next week. So that is kind of the read there on just the overall landscape of the market. If we do look at um, VIX, VIX here is, let's see, VIX, yeah, 15 uh, spot 78. So you got to go all the way back to 2021 November when we were trading around uh, the low 15s or so. I mean, this is quite a long time ago you know you're going back a year and a half since we've seen volatility this low uh, it did briefly spike all the way up to uh, almost 20 this week so again at the start of the week we were at 19 uh, vix here as the market started to break down and very quickly collapse lower after getting through some of the earnings reports after perhaps you know uh takeover and 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 you know the 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 banking side of things got um handled there on first republic so uh market definitely uh volatility market definitely complacent here going into next week so that's volatility high yield looks like it wants to break up uh break out as well a uh, nice pattern developing here and tlt i mean this pattern in the tlt this consolidation just gets better looks better and better each and every week now it's been dancing around in here it is looks like it's trying to throw some traders off the scent i mean there's a lot of gap action going on here in the long bond this week on tuesday it was up a percent and a half then it was down a full percent then it was down another percent with these gaps and then it finished up 1.61% on Friday. So this is all over the place. Move index is coming down. So, you know, bond volatility, treasury volatility is, is, you know, kind of falling and you are consolidating here after this and, and, and really consolidating after this move off of the lows from November to January. TLT looks better and better. Um, again, if it starts breaking out above 109 or so, that's that fresh leg momentum that could take it back up towards the old range here in June. Uh, but one step at a time. I mean, you can look at pretty much, you know, IEF as well. I think the pattern just looks a little cleaner perhaps in TLT, uh, but arguably, you know, IEF, same boat here. These bonds are looking, um, you know, pretty constructive, but still consolidating, don't have a true signal uh, as of right now. So 
that I think covers most of the action. Let's take a quick look at metals here. Gold, yeah, still going real quiet. Uh, I believe this was an inside week for gold consolidating. It had a hell of a move, so it's just kind of moving sideways. Oil, uh, volatility this week. I mean, it did trade all the way down uh, a couple, a few percent. It was earlier in the week, but it did recover a lot of those uh, losses, and it's trying to just you know stay in this chop zone here in this bigger channel. Not a whole lot else going on. And if we finish off here with some industries and sectors of note uh, on the downside here in terms of um, bearish new development signals, oil and gas refining and marketing starting to close now at new uh, multi-month lows. Everything else was uh, or the, this set of uh, industries here printing on uh, bullish signals. So you had beverages closing at new highs here, trying to resolve that range up. Engineering and construction, big volume coming in this week here as it starts to move higher as well. Food distribution, big volume coming in, closing at new multi-month highs. Gambling, new multi-month highs here. And uh, grocery stores, very defensive kind of tone here. Infrastructure operations, nice push here. I'm not sure what the earnings story was uh, really catalyzing this move, but this is a nice kind of breakout surge momentum here in infrastructure operations. Packaged foods as well, new highs. Uh, new recent highs. Uh, let's see. Rental and leasing services. Heavy volume coming in here, but still kind of trapped in a range. Software infrastructure, heavy volume as it starts to, uh, you know, again, consolidate at its recent multi-week highs. Specialty chemicals, specialty finance. And last but not least is good old tobacco to round us out here as uh, a slightly, you know, I guess a little still below 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 volume, but um, closing at new multi-month highs. So that is the roundup there, a little bit of industries to pay attention to, do some more homework on this set of stocks here going into the weekend. And I think that's everything. So as always, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Leave your thoughts and comments, what you're looking at. Uh, 15 spot nine something VIX. Do you believe it? You sticking with the bull case? Or are you trying to fight it here? L l let me know what your thoughts are. And as a reminder, uh, we will no not have episodes on uh, the next two Fridays. So do uh, apologize for that inconvenience, but we'll be back at it soon enough. So that is it for me. Take care. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll be back here in just a few weeks.